to do outdoor astrophotography, but you don't want to do a telescope, you just want to do wide angles uh, viewing. Most people do not have a full frame camera. Most people, regular people, have crop sensor cameras. Uh, those things come with a standard lens. Uh, they tend to be wide angle, like 18 or 16 or something like that. But they're not very fast lenses and they're not really very sharp lenses compared to a fixed focal lens. So we're not really going to use those if we can to do astrophotography. Now your obvious choice uh, would be something smaller than a 50 millimeter. 50 millimeter is great for portrait work, but in astrophotography, you want to get something that can get from one end of the horizon to the other. So you can get a very wide area. Now you can get something like this. This is a 12 millimeter and it's an f2, so it's nice uh, landscape lens and it's very fast. So at night time you can get lots of light in very quickly. Another option would be a fisheye lens. You're going to get even more horizon, uh, but this one's a little bit slower. It's a 3.5, so it, it'll take a little bit longer to get the light in. Uh, the trade-off is things will be so far away, um, you won't really see them move as much. Because the rule of thumb is you take 500 and you divide it by whatever your lens is. So this is a 12 millimeter lens then you'll get that many seconds uh, before you start seeing the stars move. Now technically the stars are still moving but you won't really notice it in your photo. Now this 8 millimeter, because it is wider so you're going to take 500 divided by the 8 you're actually going to get longer exposure out of this even though it's a slower lens. But it won't be as bright a picture as let's say the f2 lens is. Um, I wouldn't recommend going above a 50 um, if you really want, um, but it's an f1.8, it's a real cheap lens, so it can get lots of light, but you're not going to get as much area. And sometimes I even use an 85, um, because this is a 1.4, so it's really fast, it's going to get lots and lots of light in, I'm going to see a lot more stars than I will with any, with the, any of the other lenses. Now I do have some options. I have this uh, speed booster that I put uh, Canon lenses on one side and the other side fits my Sony. And in doing that it actually turns, this is a Canon lens, so it turns this 8mm into an actually uh, a 5.6mm lens. So it's, it actually ends up being a full circle when I look at the picture. But instead of 3.5 on the f-stop it's actually a 2.5 and this 50 millimeter, that's the reason I use it with, with a speed booster, instead of being a 50 millimeter, it really ends up being a 35 millimeter lens. And but it's instead of 1.8, it's a 1.3, so it's a lot faster, it's wider, so I, it's easier to use for astrophotography. And that's why I use this 85, because instead of 85, it actually turns into a 60. Um, instead of 1.4, it's actually f1.0. So it's really going to let in a lot of light very quickly. So instead of maybe it would say uh, maybe say I would get like eight seconds or ten seconds. Now I can get a lot longer because it's it's a shorter focal length. So it's only sixty, and but with all the light, I can really do shots very quickly. Now the second part of taking astro photos at nighttime is not much different than doing photos during the daytime uh, for landscaping. You don't want to just point up the straight up the sky and take a picture, that would be kind of boring. You don't want to just take pictures of the clouds, that would be boring too. You want to add elements into your picture. You want to add things like a windmill, or a barn, or trees, or mountains. You want to add something to add reference that this is where I am taking the picture in Colorado or Utah or New York or wherever you're at you want to add some extra elements to make it more interesting maybe a lake and then you can see the reflection from the Milky Way on the lake and that's what really these kind of lenses are good for taking pictures of the Milky Way you're not going to get, get a picture of uh, the moon very well with these you're not going to get a picture of anything distant object like uh, Orion or anything like that 
This is just Milky Way shots. And if you use these and some inter interesting uh, objects up close, then you're going to get a lot better picture in the long run. And that's why the wide-angle lens is nice, because things that are closer to focus, let's say a barn, can still be in focus, and the Milky Way. The stronger the lens, the problem is your focal point may not be as, as close. So you'd have to step back to get the barn or the windmill. So when choosing to do uh, Milky Way shots, just make sure you choose the right kind of equipment. Do you want lots of light? Do you want something that gets lots of area? And I tend to use the Rokinon lenses because they're really cheap. I mean, compared to a Canon or Nikon or Sony uh, lens that are made for that camera, uh, they're manual focus, which is not that big of a deal to me because once you get the star in focus, you're fine. The, all the stars are going to be the same distance, even though they're further away. Once you got it, you got it. Um, I mean, this thing costs 300 bucks. This is 300 bucks. Uh, this 50 millimeter for Canon, I think, is like $200. Uh, this broken on a really fast 85 millimeter lens, even though it's manual focus, uh, it's 300 bucks. Uh, you use a Canon or Nikon or Sony brand, uh, it could be double that or even triple that. So I hope this helped a little bit. Uh, part two, I'm going to actually go out to a site, try to find something that has interesting, maybe some rock formations or whatever, and then uh, do some Milky Way shots and show the different lenses and what they can do, uh, their strength and their weaknesses. Thank you.